London, Glasgow, Manchester. Thousands have come out in protest tonight as the world works out how to respond to America's mercurial president. President Trump has torn up international agreements on refugees. He's threatened to dump international agreements on climate change. He's praised the use of torture. He's incited hatred against Muslims. He's directly attacked women's rights. Just what more does the President Trump have to do before the Prime Minister will listen to the 1.8 million people who've already called for his state visit Im invitation to be withdrawn? The seven countries on the visa, temporary visa suspension list, they're all either terrorist havens or state sponsors of <coughs> terrorism themselves. They're on a list dating from President Obama in 2015, which he identified as the countries that America was now most at risk at from terrorist attack. What is wrong with issuing temporary bans on these countries until you've tested if your visa system is robust enough. Because I don't think that rationale stacks up. Obama did identify those countries, did tighten up the visa scheme, but simply to ban all refugees in a blanket ban, when but refugees... That, that's a different ban. I'll well, come on to the refugee well, let me ban in a question, minute. Then. So let's continue. So just let's talk about this ban with the seven well, countries. I'd like you to... Yeah, yeah, but you started answering a different one, so I'm going to bring you back to answer okay. the one that I asked, which is the ban on the seven... Uh, Failed state. They're essentially failed states, these seven countries. Now, what is wrong until you are sure that your entry system is robust enough having a 90-day ban? I, it's not for me to try and explain or uh, defend Trump's policy, which I detest, but the, well, why, why, why the rationale is flawed is that the terrorist attacks and this, the, the, the title of this executive order was protection against terrorist attacks in the US. The people who have committed the terrorist attacks in the US have overwhelmingly been US citizens or naturalized citizens. They haven't been from these seven countries. Now, the most objectionable part well, of this sweeping... Not, I'm afraid, again, that's not quite true. Um, the, there has been a terrorist... Ohio State had a terrorist attack from Somalia. Um, the attack in San Bernardino mm -hmm. involved people who had come in from outside the country. Now, what is the difference between what Mr Trump has done and Mr Obama did when the FBI discovered that using the refugee process, a number of Iraqis had got in who were terrorist threats to the country. Well, the difference... He then tightened up that, but he took six months to do it, and the number of Iraqi refugees coming in was reduced to a trickle during that time. What's first, the difference? First of all, I said the majority of the, the, those people perpetrating the attacks in the US have not been from these countries. Secondly, he tightened up the process. He didn't impose a blanket ban. And the, what is what? most objectionable... No, no. What is most objectionable about this is the blanket ban for 120 days on all refugees. Now, this is... Why this is internationally... But causing it, such trouble is that it breaks not just sort of fundamental values that we try and uphold alongside the United States, but the very conventions that have been in place if, to take refugees for more than 60 on, years. If you are not sure that your vetting procedures are robust enough, and if, as the case with Mr Obama had, that Iraqis had been using the refugee process to infiltrate terrorists, and there were two arrested in Bowling in Kentucky, uh, and their fingerprints had been found on IEDs. If you found that there's not robust enough, why would you not have a temporary ban? 
I agree that if a lifetime ban, that's entirely different. Why would you not have a temporary ban until a man who was elected saying that he would introduce extreme vetting has a chance to check the system? Because what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that is it breaches fundamental established decades old conventions about how in this world we treat refugees and we don't discriminate Oops. against those who are some of the most vetted, uh, validated, checked um, it's temporary. He was elected no, no, no. on a platform Refug of improving the vetting procedure. Why does he not can he not take 120 days to do that? He could do it in a different way. He could do it like Obama. I fundamentally object to it. And the, the reaction that people have had, I mean, my real I'll criticism... i ask you this on the refugees. May. At the height of the barrel bombing in, of women and children in Syria and of chemical weapons being used against them too in Syria, how many Syrian refugees did President Obama allow in? Andrew, I have no idea. Well, I'll tell you. I have, I'll I, tell you. In 2012, I have no idea, 31. But, but this... In 2013, 36. No, at the height of the obscenity. None of us in the Western world have a record to be proud of. The Right Honourable Gentleman's foreign policy is to object to and insult the democratically elected head of state of our most important ally. Let's just see what he would have achieved in the last week. Would he have been able to protect British citizens from the impact of the executive order? No. Would he have been able to lay the foundations of a trade deal? No. Would he have got a 100% commitment to NATO? No. That's what Labour has to offer this country. Less protection for British citizens, less prosperous, less safe. He, he can lead a protest. I'm leading a country. Yeah.